We are live on YouTube. YouTube, what is up? What is up? We are live on Facebook. Facebook, what is up? What is up? Right? You know, let's just jump right into it. Hey, this new show, Monday to Friday, bringing you news that's going to keep you informed, engaged, and reacting in the most optimal way for your business investment entrepreneur activity. Today is the 8th of August. Good old, good old 808. Let's talk about it. Of course, we had a great uh, CGNT video where we broke down top 10 things that you need uh, if you're coming to Haiti. Make sure that you check that video out if you yet have it done so. Okay. And yesterday we had a great conversation, a great conversation, Haiti Business News conversation about uh, the impeachment of Jovenel, uh, upcoming at least the attempts and how realistically, and most importantly, most importantly, we talked about the economic impact the economic impact of such an action and how likely it would uh, be able to produce a, a positive change from that regard, or at least likely. We talked about all that and I provided the step-by-step -step of what's required uh, for the process. And so really good episode, it was really popular in fact. So make sure if you haven't seen yesterday's episode, uh, head over to you know, YouTube see Genty and watch it, skip ahead, you know, take notes. It was a really good episode. Today, we're talking about Dominican Republic. Okay. And already, already I can see, I can hear the amount of diehard Dominican Republic fans, fans, citizens who, uh, whenever uh, DR comes up anywhere online, they come up and they swarm and they defend, no matter what the circumstance is, they defend. Welcome to the guys who, who are here for who are you know going to provide that commentary that I'm so used to uh, in our in our in our uh, chat. So the the discussion for today is the news story for today is the fact that the Dominican Republic has announced they're building up to ten military towers, uh, surveillance complexes along the Haitian border. Already five has started construction. The most recent one uh, is on the border of Belide, Belide uh, being in the central plateau area of Haiti, the city of Belide that borders Carazal de las Pena, that's the name of the on, on the Dominican side. And if you remember, when this most recent military tower surveillance complex was being built, there was massive protests on the Haitian side because hey, a lot of Haitians were saying this is being built on Haitian territory and it's unacceptable. But, um, on the Dominicans' behalf, that wasn't they're saying that wasn't the case. In fact, what they're building wasn't a wall as to things were being purported. They were saying that they're building a fence, right? And that's their right. They're a sovereign country. They have a, a legal requirement to protect their borders. And that's what they were doing and emphasizing. Okay. So yesterday they announced that they're trying, they're looking to expand what they're doing. They're looking to place towers, 10 towers all along the border and, and eventually grow that. Right. Just, their justification is that there are, are drug trafficking that's occurring on going both ways. There's good trafficking that's going both ways. Right. There is human trafficking going both ways. And so there needs to be an emphasized reaction on their side. And bear in mind, this isn't a unilateral action. They're actually working with the Haitian Minister of Defense. They're working with the Haitian Minister of Agriculture. They're working with the Haitian Minister of Migration. And they're also working with Haitian Customs. Right. So it's an interagency action. How much you know, how much is actually being initiated on the Haitian side. And I, I, I suspect that what's going on is the Dominicans are saying, hey, we're building some towers. It might be to your advantage to bring some of your, you know, your own border infrastructure people here, but it's being built, right? I think that's kind of how the conversation is going. So, you know, take that as as you may, the, the, and, the, and the capacity for them to now say, well, you know, it's the Haitians wanted too. Now, 
before I go, you know, any further, and I know folks are thinking, oh man, this is wrong. The Dominicans, this is another injustice that the Dominicans are doing. They're already kicking so many, you know, uh, Haitians out and, and black Dominicans out uh, regardless. But you have to understand, first off, you know, what the Dominicans are saying is, you know, related to them being able to uh, monitor their land. They, they're absolutely right. They're a sovereign country. They have the absolute right to be able to put protections up for goods and people to come in who aren't authorized. That's number one. They have, uh, additionally, um, it, it helps Haiti, particularly because one of the big issues affecting our market since the fall of Duvalier has been the, the lack of security along the border and the fact that so much goods have flooded the market that have affected our national product. A lot of uh, domestic companies that exist and that, that they're trying to produce, it's, it's very hard to compete against, you know, very cheap products that are coming in from the, from the Dominican side that are very often, again, untaxed, unregulated, right? And so from that perspective, it's actually a good thing, right? I can say it's a good thing that the Dominicans are you know, trying to emphasize that flow, especially particularly if it is going both ways, that they're not allowing things to go, go out and also not allowing things to go in. Uh, so in that case, in that situation, it's a good thing, right? Now, the constant militarization of the border, and, that's, and those folks who know the history of DR and Haiti relations, right? Under Toujou, you know, there's a river to this day, there's a, there's a body of water that's called Massacre River, right? Where the Dominican army massacred tens of thousands of Haitians along the border. And to this day, there hasn't been much of a reparation or much of even of, of, of apology that I'm aware of. If I'm wrong, please link that below uh, from the Dominican side for this terrible, terrible genocide, right? So a lot of Haitians, when they hear and see, you know, Dominicans you know, lining up on the border with, with their big guns and military equipment, they hearken to that memory in that instance of that incredible action, right? And, and particularly since we know Haiti doesn't really have a military. Of course, we rebooted our military uh, last year on a Jovenel. I think we're up to <clears throat> maybe 100, 200 troops, right? And I put them in asterisks, how much we can really call them a military force, given their training and level of equipment, funding, et cetera. Compared to the DRs, you know, well-funded thousands tens of thousands of troops that they have potentially available on their side, in addition to just a function apparatus and a much bigger, much bigger budget, right? The entire budget of DR is, is, is 10 or nine times more than Haiti, right? You can imagine the military budget is also in that same degree, if not more, right? So I think a lot of that perspective for, for why folks feel uneasy about this increase of military action uh, activity on the Dominican border is related is related to that, right? But I can tell you from a perspective of simply looking at the economics of it, simply looking at the logistics of it, I, as, a, as someone who wants to support Haitian national product, I think it's a good thing that we have a stronger border. Uh, and, and ultimately, right, ultimately what's truly important here is that we as Haitians, living abroad who are very angry, who may be very angry with what the Dominicans are doing, kicking Haitians out, who've been here for multiple generations, kicking even their own Dominican brothers and sisters out who are simply just dark skinned. Uh, those who are who feel very angry about it, of course, oh, we got to boycott DR, got to boycott DR. Okay, boycott them. That, that's, that's, that's one aspect of it. But the real aspect is why are Haitians leaving Haiti in such large numbers, right? And that's because there isn't ec economic opportunity there. And why is there economic opportunity there? There isn't enough of us Haitians coming back and doing business, enough Haitians coming back. More importantly, I think there's a lot of, there's a good amount of Haitians who do do business in Haiti. You know, we are voyeur doom, we are voyeur doom Haiti, right? There's a lot of Haitians who are 
what they're doing there, uh, building hotels, right? Building hotels in Haiti, right? Uh, a lot of Haitians going back and and setting up bars and restaurants in Haiti, right? Those are probably the, some of the most most popular business ideas that I, when I meet a Haitian, oh, I'm gonna, I gotta go back, I gotta do a quick restaurant, I gotta do a a, a cote fritai, right? These are needed, I suppose, but what is the economic impact, right? I think the number one criteria Haitians need to, to, to really consider when they're doing and looking to do an investment project in Haiti, they have you have to ask yourself, what is the job impact? Like how many jobs is this idea gonna do? Yeah, yeah, great, making money is great, great. I'm all for making money. That's what Haiti Biz is all about, you know. But you got to ask yourself, how am I impacting the job situation in the country? And if you aren't considering that, and if you aren't factoring that, and you aren't planning for that to maximize how many jobs your idea is going to provide, honestly, we don't need you. The Haitian economy doesn't need you. Um, you're not really doing any good. Yeah, you're making money, but actually, you're probably you're making money in a way that's actually hurting the country. Because again, when you're just bringing in dooms and reselling, you're doing a lot of harm. Actually, you're, you're bringing down the value of the good. You're you're providing competition for products that could have been produced in the country. Now you're dumping them. Now I, there's certain products I get right. So products that Haiti's is going to be a long time before Haiti starts to produce them. For example, laptops. You know, Haiti's not going to produce that anytime soon. I mean, we got we do have Surtab, I guess. So let me take that back. We do have Surtab. That you could potentially buy. So, so let me take that back. Surtab is an option that's um, constructed locally and provides real Haitian jobs. So, if you're looking to bring a laptop in, you know, and it's and it's, it's not something something like high grade, like you're doing video editing or something, think about buying a Surtab laptop. But how about a cell phone? Like Haiti's it's going to be a while before Haiti starts, you know, uh, manufacturing or assembling laptops in the country. Uh, sorry, I say laptops, uh, cell phones, I meant to say, cell phones in the country. So cell phones make sense, right? You know, cars, you know, to some extent, make sense. That's what makes sense. They make sense, bringing cars in. So there's certain things that you can import in that it makes sense. We're not going to build. But when you when you, when you you bring in Pepe, right, when you bring in those cheap clothes and, and, you're, and you're not allowing Haitian tailors to be able to make clothes to sell, you know, you're not doing any favors, right? So there's a, so there's a way of thinking that I think too many Haitians living abroad don't consider that have put Haiti in the situation that it's in. But that can change, right? That can change if Haitians who are abroad really start thinking about, okay, what, how, what is the economic impact of the activity that I want to do? Uh, you know, God bless, you know, so many folks who are looking to improve the country by you know, sending in dooms. God bless those who are also trying to help improve the country by doing charity. But there's only one thing that's proven to um, help uh, a country edge itself out of poverty into the next level, and that is economic opportunity that is focused and centered on producing domestically for resale, ideally abroad, but but also in the domestic market. And so, if you aren't, if your idea isn't in that regard, you know. Honestly, please don't come. <laughs> You're doing more harm than good, man. Please stay the heck out of there. Stay, stay out of here. You know, feel free critique the Haitian government, critique um, the people. You know, uh, and, not, and not critique yourself for not helping come in with the right ideas, with the right economic impact that can really help. You know, do different things and allow give space for the folks who, who do get it to come in. And, and and actually influence the country in, in a better direction. And so, so again, let me just tie it back. Again, the, we can't get mad at DR for doing what they're doing. We should be getting mad at ourselves in the Haitian diaspora for not engaging the country in the right way to help provide jobs, employment, and economic growth. Of course, Haitian government doesn't make it easy. That's why I'm building a community here, you know, to help guide, help, help inform, uh, help connect people to be able to succeed because the Haitian government doesn't make it easy for us. And, and of course, that's why I have the Anu Palais series. The Anu Palais series is, is here, um, you know, with different videos that provides very important substantive, substantive topics to help with, you know, your transition and engagement. So again, see Genti, check out that playlist, Anu Palais, a bunch of different videos that are available 
again, in that regard. But but still, the fact remains, don't be mad at DR. Okay, don't don't get mad at them. They're doing what is in the best interest of their of their country. How about us in the diaspora? We start doing what's in the best interest of our country and invest and do the right things that are going to impact and help change the economy in our country. Okay, don't get mad at them. Get mad at yourselves. Get mad at ourselves. Right. So that's where I'm gonna end it. All right. I appreciate the folks. Well, actually, before I before I do, let's see. I got John McNally on YouTube. Uh, you can't really blame the Dominican Republic to be on to be on edge, living beside a confused, undisciplined nation who doesn't know what they want. Every president the country has, the people are so impatient. I mean, I can't argue against that. I can't argue against that, right? John McNally left that comment. I can't. I can't argue against that, John. Um, and if, the, if the other shoe was reversed and Haiti was a functioning entity and then DR was, you know, a tête chargée, you know, can't even pass a PM, you know, dropping PMs left and right, can't pass a budget, right? Uh, and they had their people just inundating a very, our very a limited economy because DR, yes, DR is doing very well in the Caribbean, but they're still a very small economy, right? They're not the US, they're still a very small economy. And so if you had people just coming in and, and, and trying to, go after limited resources of our nation necessarily fault too much what DR is doing. I can't fault perhaps the racial aspect of it, but the overall idea I can't I can't fault. Right. So that's where we're gonna end it. I appreciate you guys for uh coming in and you know coming and watching. Uh do check out our video. We have a video we're dropping tomorrow. The video we're dropping tomorrow uh won't be Haiti Biz News. We're hoping we're going to drop a brand new CGN team. We're really looking forward to that video. So make sure you have your notifications on. Do check it out. And of course, we like you know if you like what we're doing here, leave a comment, hit a like, share, right? And until we're back at it again, guys, we'll be back at it again. Peace.